Okay, check, one, two, three. Check, 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 check. Check one, check two, check three. Somebody says like two and a half seconds. 2.25 seconds, thank you, Giles. Okay, I got back from my lemonade run and I see that you guys didn't want lemonade. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? <laughs> If only NDI could deliver low latency beer. Dan, you got to work an X keys into that somehow. Eric is listening on his drive home. Ah, should we should we do an audio only feed for this show? Henry was going to test First streams with version 20 today, but he couldn't find the stream frame rate settings. Where did they go? Hmm. Well, I think they got buried in a menu. Yep. If you go to the streaming settings me menu uh, and then look for the gear icon, that'll pop it up and you can find it. All right. Guido says, I'm looking sharp today. Well, I'm certainly feeling better. Feeling on the mend, as they say. Thank you. I think we all need to send Giles a pitcher of beer. Yep. Keys to choose which variety of beer you want to deliver low latency. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Camera looking good today. Thank you, Merle. I've been working on it. I've been working on it. Giles, I mean, Dan says he has to do some testing on the best frame rate for stout. <laughs> yeah, how many keyframes do you have to insert and how often? Let's see who's here today. Indrit is here. Merle, Dan, Guido, Martin. Hey, Martin. Martin's watching us from uh, Switzerland today. Giles from, from the UK. Ken from, um, is it Indiana, Ken? Um Kenny, Henry, Martin K. from Manchester, Rich, Dave, Bill from Texas, Mike from Texas, Michael Graves, I think Michael's in Texas too, Daniel Wright, Eric's watching or listening from his car, uh, guest 903, oops, my chat wing just reorganized itself again, why does it do that? Um, Rich is here, Peter, Rudy, Ryan, it's not alphabetical order. It just period. Oh, Anderson Springer. Hey, Anderson. And Timothy's here. Welcome, guys. So glad to have you. Glad to have you. How are we doing on time? We got seven and a half minutes. Boy, I love the new VMix 20 production clock. It's just right there. Pow. And it tells me, you know, we've got it. And Tommy House is here. Tommy and I got to press the flesh a couple of weeks ago. It was great. He was actually in Fairhope and swung by the house, got to see the studio, got to meet him. We didn't get to break bread, but that'll be next time. Tommy owes me a phone call. <laughs> uh, Timothy says, plenty of time to update something. That's right. No, actually, uh, there was a major, up not a major, but there was the monthly update from Microsoft last night, um, which so yesterday, that's right, it was yesterday. And Eric is in Kentucky. There we go. Uh, Guido says, how can I turn that clock on? Well, Guido, go to settings. Go to, uh, come on, settings. Okay, there we go. Go to the um, options tab and look down there. So there's some new stuff under settings, under options. And you're looking for transition display. And you've got a choice. You can kind of pick what's going to be in that transition bar. Um, whether you're going to have the transitions or the fade to black or the overlay or the T-bar or the production clocks. There you go. And then if you want a production clock in your, um, as an, as an input, I think you just double click it. Yeah. That opens it up and then you can see, let's see, type event, recording streaming clock. Let's just do a clock. Uh, no, let's do an event. Event set for 2 p.m. Eastern. That's right. We'll create an input. There it is right there. 
And I can add this input. It is number 75. Boy, I like having so many multi-views available. I'm using six or seven of them on this one. So let's put the clock in. And then we'll just take a second and resize it. Boom. And that's uh, the current time here. So we don't need the current time up there anymore. And uh, And the time until the show starts. There we go. And Guido found it. All right. Yeah, v version 20 is kind of like, it's not this one, it's like Christmas. For those of you that celebrate Christmas, it's not that one big gift. You know, it's not the new car. <laughs> but it's just lots of little gifts here and there and everywhere. And you get to see them. Okay. Henry says, frame rate used to be between stream key and quality. I can't find it under any gear. Well, let me see if I can pop up a window and show you. Um, let's see. So let's, we're still in pre-show here. So we can do this stuff in pre-show. We're going to do a desktop capture. And I think this is display one. Let's see. No, that's not it. That's display two. So add input, desktop capture, is display to that one. Yeah, there we go. OK. So this is, uh, hmm. Oh, I see. That's, <laughs> and it's not working, is it? Close. Let's go back to this one, and we'll go back to this one. Um, I'll tell you about that one in just a second. I've been having so much fun. That that was part of the part of the fun about being under the weather and, you know, not getting to hang out with you guys. But it didn't mean I I didn't get to hang out somewhere. Okay, so let's see. Can I open a stream? Yeah, there we go. And what we're looking for is this little gear icon right here. And that's where we can set the, the frame rate. And, and, and we get to do it for each one of these buttons. OK. So there you go. That's how you do it. Pretty easy. Jerry's here. And you can tell because he announced it in all caps. Chad is here. Chad, Chad, kudos to Chad. Chad had an awesome review of vmix on the vmix facebook page just a minute ago chad i'm going to read it this is this is great it said vmix and vmix call have completely changed my panel format it's so all caps so easy and delivers far better results than my previous toolkit good review chad if you want to review the vmix uh, site go to facebook and go to vmix and and do a review you can also review us too um, there's actually an Easter Shore Broadcasting page there. So you can go review us too. If you're watching us on YouTube uh, directly or on um, what are those others called? Facebook, Twitter, and, and uh, Periscope, come on over to easternshorebroadcasting.com because you'll get the chat. I know you see the chat now, but when the show starts, this is going to kind of go away so that the star of the show, that's me, <laughs> can be in my full glory. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Okay. Bill says, audio is out of sync. YouTube until refresh. Okay. Let me know when it's better. Chad said, couldn't be happier when you rather use all three stream options in vMix or use one to restream.io. Actually, Chad, I have, um, I'm doing what I always wanted to do back in the olden days when I, before vMix is uh, using NDI. I'm, I've got a main production PC here uh, with two monitors, actually three monitors. I need to show you this setup. It's so cool. And then another PC um, with the monitor off to my left here that is my streaming and recording PC, and that's streaming to YouTube and Facebook and recording when, when it comes time to record the show. And then here on my production PC, I'm, I'm streaming to Periscope because I don't start the Periscope feed until the show starts. So until vMix figures out a way, whoops, look at that little countdown clock. We can see it's almost time for the show. I love that. Until vMix figures out a way to allow us to start um, 
streams at different times on the same PC, I'm going to use this kind of two PC setup. So there we go. Um, and Daniel's here from Gillette, or is that Gillette, Wisconsin? All right. Guido said had the same audio out of sync, thought it was caused by vMix restarting, but apparently I'm not alone. Hmm, well, let's see. Uh, render time is three milliseconds. Looks like we're doing okay. Looks like we're doing okay. All right, well, uh, I'll tell you what. Let's, um, let's get ready to start the show. Let's do it. Shall we? Okay. So let's go to our show tab. Is there anything we don't need there? Ba -bum -bum -bum. No, I think we got everything. All right. Okay, John, Jan says that uh, he had sync issues. Giles had sync issues. Hmm. Chad says he loves the ultra low latency, but he misses scrolling back to catch what he missed. Ah, gotcha. Martin K says, hey, Martin, try refreshing the page if the audio is out of sync. It was for me, too, until I did that a minute ago. And it could be the YouTube low latency. You know, it probably has less error checking because of its uh, doesn't have time. And Andres is here from Sweden. Welcome. Glad to have you. Let's see who else has joined us that has not been properly greeted. Tommy Willis is here. He just got back from volleyball practice. And Andrew's here. Let's see. Ken, Ken did I welcome you earlier? I think I did. Gerald's here. Gerald had a really nice review on Facebook. Thank you very much. We'll probably be reading that as part of the show later. Dave is here. Um, -da -bum -bum -bum. And I'm sorry, it uh, looks like Ryan and Jerry. And Jan says that Maria is here too. That's good. All right, there we go. Tommy says Drano will fix sync issues. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, that's too much. That's too much. You know, Tommy, that's my trick, too. <laughs> if you can't come up with a good answer, come up with a funny one. <laughs> oh, that tickled me. All right, we're over time. We need to get moving. We're, we're two minutes over, over show time. So let's see if we can't. Whoops, hold on a second. Is that going to work? Um, let's pull that wire out of the way. You wouldn't believe all the wires I've got going. I thought wireless was going to make our life easier. No? Let's see. Okay. I think that'll do it. That's going to be, that's going to have to work. All right. Martin's here. Very good. Anderson Springer says the delay is under four seconds. That's because you're so close. All right, let me get some lemonade. And let's go to, uh, let's start the show. Let's try it. Let's see if this will work. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, we'll go there. Well, hello and welcome. I'm, whoa, the music just died. I hope everything's okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? 
<laughs> I'm Tom Sinclair. This is Streaming Idiots. This is a place where you can laugh and have fun and um, and talk about sync issues. Yes, we were talking about sync issues in the chat room just a minute ago. You know, normally when you're talking about live streaming, you're thinking about, okay, a sync, that's an audio, kind of an audio and a video sync issue. Well, Tommy suggested Drano to fix your sync issues. Okay, Tommy, we got you. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's too funny, too funny. Thank you all for uh, your wishes last week when I was under the weather and didn't stream. Um, I appreciate that very much. It did encourage me, and uh, I feel terrific today, so here we go. But at my age, you know, <laughs> anything can happen. Um, really looking forward to today's show. Did some show prep uh, this morning and got set up. We're going to talk about the new Marshall camera. Marshall Electronics line that we've added to our, our line here at Eastern Shore Broadcasting. Remember this show, rem, this show, this is full disclosure now, okay? You're, you're always going to get the truth from me, at least the way I see it. The full disclosure is that this show is a giant infomercial. It's an infomercial for Eastern Shore Broadcasting, my company, the company that sponsors the show. <laughs> And so we're hoping it's a lot of info and just a little bit of Marshall. So let me get the Marshall part out of the way. Um, EasternShoreBroadcasting.com is where you can find this show, of course. But it's also where you can purchase uh, PTZ Optics cameras, the, the cool PTZ cams, the new Marshall cams that we've added to the line, um, the Magwell capture cards and the USB 3 dongles. Um, Gerald has a great review on Facebook of one that he got this morning, and he's so he, he was kind of disappointed because it didn't take any. All he did is he plugged it in, and it worked. <laughs> it was like, where's all the where's all the fuss? You know, all the troubleshooting skills that I've developed over the years, I didn't get to use them. Oh my goodness. Uh, we also represent uh, PI Engineering, the guys that the folks that make X keys. So big shout out to Dan and the PI Engineering folks. Love X keys. If you if you I got it, you know I haven't done a review on an X key in a while. I need to do that because I've upgraded from the 24 to the 80 since the last time I did a review. So we have to do that. And then of course, last but not least, is VMix, the wonderful software that I've just fallen in love with. I just wrap my arms around it every day and just no, I'm teasing. That's a little that's a, that's a little weird, Tom. Uh, anyway. So if you, if you need any of those products, you can get them into my store. If you need multiples of those and you want to kind of work out a deal, shoot me an email, Tom at EasternShoreBroadcasting.com, and I will respond immediately. Um, and sometimes we're able put, to put together special buys. We did a PTZ Optics buy, special buy a while back, and we're able to pile up just a bunch of PTZ cameras and, uh, and get everybody a good deal as a result. And so periodically we'll try to do that. In fact, we may try to do that with the Marshall camera since we're bringing that out um, as a new line. We'll see. You know, a lot of times the manufacturers won't let us advertise a price that's lower than a certain point, what they call their MAP, um, uh, minimum advertised pricing, I think is what, it's, what that refers to. So we can't always share those information um, in a public format like this, but we can do it certainly by, e e uh, by email and uh, other kinds of things. <laughs> oh, Chris, watch, you tear me up. Um, if you're watching us on YouTube directly, Facebook, Twitter, Periscope, come on over to easternshorebroadcasting.com because you, you can get the chat room right here. And these guys are trying, they are trying their best to, uh, to tickle me. Uh, and they're doing a pretty good job. Richard says, uh, well, but wait, there's more. <laughs> if you act now, you can get to, no, I'm teasing, I'm teasing it. I really, I really don't want the commercial part to be like that, but I do have to tell you what we do because it's, ha it's how we stay in business. Um, while we're kind of, we're in that transition between commercial and info right now, I want to give a big shout out to uh, Lisa in Massachusetts. We did some consulting with her yesterday on a remote training project that she's doing using uh, PTZ cameras and all sorts of other cool, neat things. Uh, shout out to uh, Aram and Marlene, and uh, is it Marlene? Marlena? I'm, golly, I've, I've got it written down, but I can't read my own writing. Anyway, they're out in California, and they commissioned us to build them a custom PC for a talk show they're starting. I'm really excited about that. It's on the workbench. We, when we build them, we build them once on the workbench and get everything tested and make sure it's working. Then we take it apart, <laughs> and we put it in the case. Yes, and then we build it again. 
and test it again. And that way it gets built and tested twice so we make sure it's as bulletproof as, as possible. Another shout out to Catherine in Switzerland we consulted with last week. She's doing a talk show and needs some help kind of getting her gear right. She's making the transition from Wirecast to vMix. And so she wanted to make sure she had all her bases covered. That was a pretty wise move. Uh, shout out to Dewey in Texas, just, just got some PTZ cams from us, to Tom in Texas who just got some Majorwell stuff, uh, to Jim in South Carolina, just got, some, got a PTZ camera and then got another one, he liked it so much, and um, to Mario in North Carolina who actually, uh, we're working with Mario on developing a school studio in a box that they want to market, and um, it would have vMix at its heart. So big shout out to all you guys and, and thank you for, for talking with me. It's always a treat for me. I mean, heck, I love to talk, can't you tell? Um, let's see, um, news kind of stuff. VMix, uh, VMix Call will now work with your iPhone, iPad, if you have the new iOS um, version. I think it's 11. And I, I think that's limited at this point to Safari. So if you've got Safari, you can use VMix Call. Give that a try. And a hat tip to uh, to Kenny for getting that, for showing us, you know, weeks ago how he, he was on the beta program, I guess, for the iOS, um, for the OS, and uh, was able to get it working on his iPad a while back. So, so hat tip to Kenny on that one. So let's see. Um, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Um, oh, yeah. That's a, let's look at the cameras. Let's look at the cameras. Oh, by the way, coming up next week, before we get to the cams, coming up next week, we've got uh, Chris Graner with Rivet. Rivet is a, uh, I won't say a new player, but they're new to me, a new player in the pay-per-view um, genre. And he's got some interesting things about that. I don't want to steal any of his thunder. But if you're interested in pay-per-view, you definitely want to tune in next week because we're going to be talking about pay-per-view exclusively next week. And that is October 11th, October 11th on Streaming Idiots, Pay-Per-View, and Rivet, R-I-I-V-I-T. If you can't wait until then, R-I-I-V-I-T.com, Rivet.com. So, um, let's see. Oh, last order of business. Whew, golly, there's so much business. Um, you need, if you're not already, you need to join our Facebook group. Streaming Idiots, yeah, right down there, down at the very bottom below the Streaming Idiots banner. Because there is a 24-7 conversation going on about live streaming. And almost everything, anything you can think of about live streaming, from gear to software to CDNs to venues to electricity, I mean, just obscure stuff and common stuff. Stupid questions? No. If you don't know the answer, it's not a stupid question. Ask it. It's a, it's a gentle group. They, they don't make fun of each other. They make fun of me, but that doesn't count. Um, and they, they have a lot of respect, and they love to help folks that are just starting out, and they love to help folks that have been doing things for a long time and are have a kind of a weird, wacky workflow and are trying to get some problems figured out. Anyway, there's, they're great, great guys and gals there, and, um, and give it a look. Streaming Idiots, it's facebook.com slash groups slash streaming idiots. Or, or just get into Facebook and, you know, do a search for Streaming Idiots. You'll find us. It's a great group, and I highly, highly recommend it. I will say that we don't accept everybody that, that asks to be a member. So if you're interested in stealing our identities and all that kind of stuff, you know, we're going to check you out. We're going to check you out. Yeah, yeah. And we probably won't let you in. <laughs> anyway, okay, enough, enough fiddle-faddle. Enough fiddle-faddle, enough riddle-rattle. Um, let's talk about Marshall cameras. Okay, today's setup is using a Marshall camera. You say, Tom, you look, you look good. You look bad. <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> you look just as bad <laughs> as you always do. But we're using a Marshall. Um, it's called a um, a miniature camera, and this one is the Marshall CV502. That's the one that I'm on right now. And, and here is another Marshall CV502. They're huge. They're just mammoth cameras. You're gonna, it's going to take an extra sturdy tripod to mount these guys on. Um, let, me, let me give you a better look at it. I've got a little, a little camera demo set up here. Uh, yeah, 
So let's go to the camera demo. There we go. Um, this is the, the 502 that I'm using today. And it has, let me swing this one out of the way for just a minute before my big paws get, get onto it. And you can see it's got what looks like two SDI connectors on the back. Uh, really, the top one is SDI. Oops, sorry, the bottom one is SDI. And the top one is component. Um, composite, excuse me, composite. The, uh, the little checkerboard over here is the power app. And then this little toggle switch, little joy switch right here, allows us to control the camera settings. So we can set white balance and color and all sorts of other cool things with the little, this little guy here. It, it puts a little menu on the screen. I'd show you, but I'd have to go across the room to turn it on. Um, really kind of neat. Now, lens-wise, there's a nice little lens cap there. You know, <laughs> the first, yes, you're right. The first time I used it, <laughs> I was like, why is there no picture? <laughs> yes, but let's take the lens cap off. And this is a fixed focus lens. It's got a little set screw at the top right there. You see the set screw. And the lens itself just screws off. Actually, I probably have to un have to loosen up the set screw to get this guy out. Um, this guy is a little bit of a fisheye. It's not what I'm using today. I, I'm using, a, I think I'm using a 12 millimeter. Thanks to Dennis for the heads up on, on, on which millimeter to try. And we'll be putting the, uh, a different selection of lenses in stock, if, if not uh, this week, certainly next week. Um, and the idea is that you find the lens that is perfect for your application. You set it and forget it. And that's what I've done with with this shot today well let's go back to this shot for just a second so you can see this is a this is a set it and forget it shot i leave the camera on 24 7. why do you do that tom well i'm i want to test and see you know if the camera fails after two months of being left on 24 7 then we need to know that so that we don't put it either so that marshall can fix it if there's something wrong with it or so that we don't do things that we shouldn't do in that situation um, the, 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 the connections to the camera, yeah, let, let's go back to the camera and let's look at that. Um, let, me, let me set this one just to the side for just a second. And I want to bring it in and show you the other one because that's the one that I've got all the doohickeys to. This is the 505. This is the 502. This is the 505 CV. And you can see they're pretty much the same except this guy is huge. Again, let me, for perspective, let me tell you how big he is. Yes, he's huge. He's mammoth. But he is bigger than the, than the 502. And the reason is because this particular camera will go both HD-SDI and HDMI. And you say, uh-oh, Tom, where's the little toggle, the little joystick? Well, they've put this, this proprietary adapter here so that they can run power, uh, joystick control and RS-485 control to the camera through, drum roll please, actually I do have a drum roll app but I'm using both hands so I can't get it. So we're going to connect there and then we've got this great, there's the, joy, there's the joystick controller and then the rest of the connector comes in, oops, right there. And so we've got red, which is power, with a warning saying that it's power. Yes, that is a mic. <laughs> and this is the RS-485. So when I connect, let's see, we'll just spin it around until we get it to find its home position there. Well, maybe I need to pull the barrel back a little bit. Make sure I'm using the right one. <laughs> it won't fit on the uh, HD SDI. There we go. And it locks in. And now I've got the ability to plug in all of those guys. I've also got a power supply. And by the way, it's a multi-continent power supply. So there's a, a clip here that clips in the, uh, the USA and then the power supply is actually a locking power supply. So they go together like that. 
and then we spin the the nut down on it so we can't get them apart. So now we've got the ability to have power to it. Um, it's not PoE. In fact, it's not E at all. There is no E in this particular camera. Um, this one does HD SDI. This one does SDI only. And this is the original model. I think they just felt pressure to come out with uh, with a HD SDI model. Both of them are $499 retail. Um, so so pretty cool. Um, let's see, what else does it come with? It comes with a, um, a nice little information sheet. This is the 505. And in that information sheet, it tells you about the controls. There we go. And all the specifications. Now, this is an electronics company. I mean, these guys are into specs. And so here are all the different kinds of things that it will do, all the settings on it. Plus, it has an operational manual that the operations manual will tell you about all the settings on the ODS, the on-screen display, oh, excuse me, OSD. And so it gives little pictures of the screens so that you can see what they look like and an explanation of how they work so that you can set up your camera the way you want to set it up every time. Yes, there we go. Um, does it record its settings? I don't think it does. I haven't found that yet where it will record the settings. I think you have to set it each time you um, disconnect it from power. So if you don't, it doesn't have an on-off switch. No, it does not have an on-off switch. It just connects to power and then it does not connect to power. Uh, does the 502 have audio input as well? Uh, no, it does not. 502, well, you know what? I, I may have spoken too soon. Let's take a look at the, the goodies that came with the 502 and make sure we're not missing something here. Uh, there's some lenses. Yep. No, no audio with the 502. So the 502 is an SDI video only. All right. Joystick. Um, the joystick for the 502 is right here on the back of it. The joystick on the 505 is on the, the wire that controls it. And so basically it's a up, down, left, right, and then a push in to set. Um, joystick for functions like, uh, let's see, Chris, we've got a whole list of functions right here. Um, for um, white balance control, for exposure control, for backlight, for day, night, uh, to turn the image stabilizer off and on. Um, to turn the microphone off on the five, 505, um, to turn on Genlock, image control, display control, and all of the things that are inside those menus. Um, for example, the mic uh, control allows you to set the audio level. Uh, the Genlock I'm not a Genlock guy, but apparently there's some Genlock controls on it too. Uh, you can flip the image, you can reverse the image, you can digitally zoom. All of this would be basically in a fixed camera setting. This is not a camera that you're going to actively zoom with. It's not a camera that you're going to um, operate at all other than to cut to the shot. This shot right here, it's a static shot. And um, I, th I think they use the Marshall cameras for the in American football, in the NFL, and maybe in college too, I'm not sure. But I think it's Marshall cameras that are in the pylons at the end zone. So if you see that, that, that camera image going across, across the goal line, that's a Marshall camera behind the scenes on that one. In the uh, National Basketball Association, the NBA, and in... NCAA college basketball, they use the Marshall camera over the back of the goal to, to look down on the basket. So, you know, very fixed, uh, very particular use, fixed situations. But I think uh, 
I think they're great for for talk show environment. I mean, I've I've tried all sorts of cams over the years in my talk show. I started out with you know I don't know how many different <laughs> Logitech or Microsoft webcams, and then graduated to the uh, you know the Canon Vixia line because I was using those for sports, and then graduated to the PTZ Optics because I had one in house and it was a really good lens, and and now. I've gone from you know from small to medium to large, back to super small again, and I'm I'm delighted with the Marshall cam, and I think I'll I'll continue to stick with it. I, I will probably experiment. <laughs> I'll probably experiment, and swap out this 502 for the 505 in an upcoming show, just to be able to have a, a gauge for how the HDMI uh, is different or not different from the SDI in the 502 versus the 5 excuse me in the 505 versus the 502 and then compare the HDMI and the H, and the uh, and the SDI in the 505 since it has both of them I don't think they can run concurrently but I'll find that out uh, it would be nice if they could because then you can just you know have a monitor shot and then also have a feed and you won't have to use the output from a monitor so those are those are pretty cool Pretty cool. Um, let's see. Uh, Mike says the 502 looks like it has 1080p 60 using the 3G SDI connector. Thank you, Mike. That's great. How does it compare to the GoPro, please? Well, you know, uh, Chris, that's a good question. I am not a GoPro guy. I've never held one. I've never used one. But people that I've talked to say that the GoPro is pretty finicky when it comes to live streaming, whereas the Marshall just, you know, it, you just hook it up and it works. Um, you know, you set some settings for color or, or you know, you, you get a, the right lens so that you got your, your focus correct. Um, Guido says it's 29.97, 59.94 frames, so not for Europe. That is correct. Tommy says, can the 502 ensure world peace? Uh, no. And yes, that is, Tommy is the same one that wanted to add Drano for sync. That's right. <laughs> Ken says the GoPro has a much wider viewing angle. Um, I have not, I have not tested that. I do know that the Marshall has interchangeable lenses, so there may be a lens that has a wider viewing angle. But Martin, uh, says that you can get them for Europe. There's a European version, so that would be one with a 25 or a 50 frame rate. So there we go. It, that's the beauty of, of a kind of a collaborative show like this is that you guys know what you know and well hold on, let me let me rephrase that I know what I know and you guys know what you know and it's nice that you can fill in the gaps there we go Mike's Mike's giving us the whole uh, the, on the on the CV 502 uh, the frame rate of 1920 excuse me 1920 by 1080 uh, p60 p p50 p30 p25. 1920 by 1080i, 60 and 50, uh, 1280, 720, uh, 60, 50, 30, and 25. So there you go. And Martin says, yes, you can fit any lens you want to them. Any? Any, Martin? Ah. Uh, there we go. And Ken said it would be nice to see a comparison of the lenses for the Marshalls. Well, that's a great idea. Um, can. That's right. And Michael says 500 each. And that is correct. Yes. 500 each for the HDI version, HDMI version that is also SDI. And then 500 for the HD, the uh, SD, SDI version. Are there any mounts for the camera? The camera uh, takes a standard tripod mount. So mount it on whatever you want. Right now, I am right now i have got this mounted on a swing arm that has a bracket attached to it with a monitor attached to it a little confidence monitor so i can see myself um kenny says last last show the focus changed as you move yeah actually i think what was happening kenny last show which was of course two weeks ago is that i had the um, the white balance set on auto and whenever I moved my hands, the color changed. And 
And it, it did appear to me when I did that also that the image got sharper, but I think it was just a coloration kind of thing and not a focus because un unless I'm actually physically moving the camera closer or further away or adjusting the focus on the lens, um, the, the, I don't think there's a way to change focus. I mean, I think there's a way to zoom in the 505, but I don't think there's a way to change focus. Martin says the M12 lens is standard, but they're converters to other lens types. Um, and what he meant was the any, any M12. Thank you, Mark, of course. Uh, what would people use them for specific applications? Well, talk shows, obviously. Basketball goals, uh, pylon cams. Um, but think of other situations where you would want a fixed camera that would not be large and intrusive and would be able to, to give you you know, if, if you can put a camera there, again, a fixed camera, so I can think of, of a lot of church applications where you want to do a fixed camera. For, for example, I've had several folks that wanted to do a camera over the, bap, the, the baptistry so that they could have a down, down shot on people that, that were getting baptized. Um, I, think that, I think the uses are going to be not standard camcorder, you know, of uses since we don't have zoom and it doesn't take an operator um, it's going to be yeah Daniel saying pul pulpit and lectern shots um, Tommy says it would not be used for women's beach volleyball <laughs> um, but I, I think they're going to be specific circumstances where you're going to want a particular s static shot um, I mean I can think of any event that, um, you know, like a city council meeting and, and you've got a, a, an inexpensive camera like this, I mean, a good quality inexpensive camera like this that's giving you your, your room shot uh, or, the, or the shot of the stage or the, the podium or, or whatever it is that is not a movable shot. And the camera is, is mounted in that position and it, and it, it doesn't unmount, it just stays there um, for those kind of situations. I can imagine, um, I can't imagine it in a sporting environment unless it were the kind of camera that you were to put in the, um, in the press box with the commentators. This would be a good quality camera that would set up that would, would mean, you know, you didn't, you didn't have to use a camcorder um, or, uh, or another kind of camera in that, in that spot. Uh, Guido's saying that B&H calls them POV cams. Yep. Mike says the basketball hoop. That's right. All right. Giles says the focus may look as if it's changing if YouTube is auto-switching from one quality to another. Well, that's certainly true. Yep. But we'll be diving some more into these cameras in the future. Uh, again, I think... You know, we're not taking on lines left and right. We're trying to be real particular about the lines that we put into our store, things that we can know an awful lot about so that when people want to buy one, we can counsel them and say, yes, this is going to work in that purpose, or <laughs> we don't think it's going to work. And that's, that's the reputation we're trying to develop as, as being somebody that has accurate information, even if it means turning away a sale, to say, you know, no, this is not going to work in your situation. That's, that's hugely important to me to be able to provide accurate information that people can rely on and make their decisions on. Uh, the last thing I want is for somebody to call back and say, Tom, you told me X, but it's Y. And that's, that's, not, the way I, I, that's not the way I operate. Tommy, somebody was telling me the other day, Tom, Tom your business is never going to be able to scale because it's just you. I mean, what if all of a sudden you have 4,000 customers? <laughs> well, number one, that's not going to happen. But number two, I don't want my business to scale. I, I want to be able to have a one-to-one -one relationship with all the clients. So when they call, I know who they are and they know who I am. Um, and, you know, Tom, how are you going to deal with, you know, if you have 100 calls tomorrow? Well, we'll deal with them one call at a time. <laughs> so... There we go. Merle has put a sample clip from a, um, a YouTube video uh, by Marshall in the chat room. So if you're not in the chat, come on over to easternshorebroadcasting.com and you can get in on the chat right now. Um, 
let's see, other things going on. Um, Mike asks, are the Marshalls in the, the Eastern Shore Broadcasting Store? No, they're not there yet. We'll, we'll have them there by the end of the week. Have them there by the end of the week. So there, that's the story on that. Um, and I'm looking at the production clock, and the production clock says we're four minutes over. <clears throat> Great clock. Actually, I think it, it went to yellow first, and now it's red. Maybe it should start flashing. Maybe it did, and <laughs> I just didn't notice it. I'm going to pick up the, uh, the webcam here for just a second, and I want to show you the, um, the, the look that, that we've got today. And let me, let me turn a few things off in it first. Um, and we're going to just turn it back to autofocus. And let me just grab it up for a second. And I want to give you a, a look, if I can do it, of what, um, of what my setup is today, because I, I think it's really pretty cool, and I'm, I'm really pretty pleased. Um, so let's switch over here. Here we go. So starting from the left, over here on the left, next to my Lemonade, you can see the streaming and recording PC. And so that's got the output in the top right hand corner and you can see the uh, the clock is red and I can't really zoom too much on that but that's my preset for streaming and recording to the right of that is the main production in vmix and you can see my show notes there you can see uh, my my X keys guy and my vmix guy and my Giles guy there on top of the Behringer UMC 404 HD only using one port in that at least today um, the other part of my setup is here on the right you can see I'm monitoring the chat room I'm monitoring the audio and vmix and I'm monitoring the uh, the folks that are in in the YouTube and then what's new, you can see the, the Marshall. Well, you can't see the Marshall because it's black, but you can see a small confidence monitor that I've installed there. And that really, I'm looking forward to using that with guests because it's going to help me to, to keep better eye contact with the guest. There we go. And then, of course, I've got my X Keys 80 here, uh, a couple of PTZs just in case and then a, a myriad of other doodads including some dum-dums because you gotta have dum-dums when you're doing a show like this so but that's what i wanted to show you was the confidence monitor there there we go all right that was fun and uh, i think the ptz optics folks have got us scheduled to do a studio tour on their world tour of studios so that should be coming up in a month or so we'll make sure you get plenty of information about that um, so let's see what do we got up there what is the advantage Kent says what is the advantage to the Marshall camera over a webcam 920 that's a good question Kent because I was using the the Logitech C920 to, to kind of turn everything around um, I think number one is going to be that the, and this may not be an advantage, it may be a disadvantage to you, but the advantage I think to the Marshall is that it's a much better picture. It's coming in through a capture card. It's not coming in through USB. In my experience, uh, USB webcam adds about 10% to the CPU usage. A, uh, a, a the Marshall coming in on a capture card is not going to do that. Um, I think the clarity of the image is superior. Um, that's probably it. You know, so, so other folks may have some other ideas, and but you know the Marshall camera is also five times the cost, um, maybe seven times the cost, depending on what you can buy a P, a, a Logitech C920 for. You can get a Logitech C920 for what, $60 or $70 versus $500 for a Marshall. But I think it's really a quality issue at that point. And again, you know, I started with the C920 years ago and, and gradually moved away from it 
because of CPU usage and because I wanted I wanted clearer, sharper image. The uh, the lens in the C920, you know, it's it's great for a lot of things, but it's not as good as a more professional level. Yep. There we go. Anderson says there will never be any spills on his set. I'll drink to that. Okay. We're going to move into uh, the after show, the post show here, and we'll talk some more about the Marshall Cam there. If you're watching us live, stick around for that. If you're watching us uh, after the fact, we might this might be the version that has the post show with it. If not, look for that on YouTube because it'll be there. But please uh, join our Facebook group, Streaming Idiots, and, and also go to YouTube and su subscribe to us there. And we'd love to have you come browse through our store, easternshorebroadcasting.com. We're getting it revamped soon so uh, you can take a look now and then take a look later and say how much better it looks i'm tom sinclair this has been streaming idiots don't forget to join us next week when we have chris graner i'm looking over on my, my whiteboard over here chris graner from from rivet r-i-i-v-i-t rivet.com to talk about pay-per-view so if you're looking for pay-per-view make sure you tune in next week otherwise stick around We'll be right back with the post show. And we're out. Let's see, what do we got here? There we go, there's a pre-show. Oh no, I don't want pre-show, I want post-show. There we go, there's the post-show. Isn't that a cool background? I like that. Uh, Tommy House says, good show, thank you very much. I love it. Um, let's see, Chris Watts says that HDSDI can be used in a professional environment. That's true, yeah, it, it, it is in turn, intended as a broadcast camera, Kent. Um, so for, but for, for folks in a home studio situation, it's kind of, you know, it, 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 it can be that it can be a situation where you're ready to cross over from a kind of a webcam camera situation to a more professional level camera situation because you want the increase in quality. That's, that's what it is. Martin says much more control. Yeah, you, you, more control over the color, uh, white balance, all those different kinds of things that, you know, sometimes we're, <laughs> that's the deep end of the pool for us. Uh, Dan says more lens options. Merle says better optics for sure. There you go. There's, there's the list right there. Uh, Tommy Willis says using vMix, I have about 20% total usage using three USB cams while streaming and recording. That's great, Tommy. That's great. Tim Ligon says, welcome, Tim. I didn't see you slip in. Nice to see me 100% again. Will you be at NAB New York? I will not be at NAB New York. I will not be at NAB New York. Kind of the NAB, the Las Vegas show is my big show. And the rest of the time, I'm just hanging around here in Alabama. Uh, Rich says, Tom, are you going to be a Marshall supplier? Yes. Yes, we are a Marshall reseller. Uh, approved by Marshall and uh, actually had lunch with the, the Marshall rep who serves a, like a two or three state area down this way. So it was, it was good to, to meet him and, um, and press the flesh as it was and talk about all things Marshall. Um, Michael says that HDMI SDI sources add the requirement for a capture device. That is correct. That is correct. But if you're spending five hundred dollars on a camera, <laughs> you're, you're you're not doing a low budget operation. You know, if you're low budget, it's a seventy dollar webcam. If you're ready to step up, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna put in a yeah you're gonna put in what are we using today? I think uh, a Black Magic. Um, actually, what we're using today is a Black Magic Intensity Pro, which is HDMI input. And we have a $20 SDI to HDMI converter. So I, I'm looking forward to going straight SD, HDMI into the, the Intensity Pro. Um, I've got a, a Blackmagic um, mini recorder that um, 
that I actually took in on trade and then it stopped working. So I'm going to have a go at, uh, I've already, actually I've already requested RMA from Blackmagic on this. I think it's still, still got a lot of its warranty left. So, and they've been, Blackmagic has been real good about, about fixing things that break. Um, you know, that's, that's the way, the way it is. Um, Chris says, I met these guys from the U.S. at IBM, at IBC, the stream guys. Do you know them? I do not. Kind of sounds like a, a knockoff. <laughs> uh, Jerry says, anyone ever have any glitching with camera image from a PTZ over IP, even when the usage in vMix is under 50%? Yes. And Jerry, if you're using the low latency check in vmix and you're you've set your buffer to zero and you're taking your video over ip you will get dropped frames better to not use low latency give it about a 300 or 400 millisecond buffer and then adjust your audio to compensate and and that will do it um, and if your your uh, ptc cam is is young enough you can upgrade to ndi when that comes out later this month Mike says, are, other Marshall pro are any other Marshall products that you're looking at, Tom S? Not at this point. Um, but, you know, again, the stipulation that I'm using, Mike, is that I want to be familiar with the product. I want to use the product. Well, I take that back. I pr I'm probably looking at, once I kind of get these cams um, well understood, and I've learned them, I, I want to get a Marshall 4K PTZ cam in. And, and see that because I think that's going to be a good option, at least until PTC Optics can come up with a 4K cam because I've had some requests for that. Uh, Ken says he hears airplanes or thunder. I don't, <laughs> but it could have been. It could have been. Yeah, that was just my stomach growling. There we go. Um, Jan says the low latency YouTube stream not as reliable as one would like. I think that's probably true. I may switch back to the medium latency or the this is the ultra low. I may just switch back to the low. Um, but -bum -bum -bum. Bird Dog is just a different kind of capture device. Yes, it is. Tommy says it's NASCAR. Okay. Jerry says, thanks. Mike says, if you're talking about stream guys, the CDN, then yes, they've been around for many, many years. Well, then they're not a clone. That's good. Um, Martin S. says, Michael, fair point it is. There you go. Okay, so we're up to speed on all that. And Michael says, is 4K streaming starting to take hold? Well, Take a look next Tuesday when the vMix guys have their October Fun Time Live show because they will be... Does that look like I have ears? Oh, my goodness. I have mouse ears. <laughs> Need to find a new picture or else orient myself a little differently. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the vMix guys are doing a, a 4K 60 production next Tuesday. So you'll want to tune in for that. I think it's going to be 8 p.m. Eastern, and you can watch that at vmix.com slash live. So that would be a, a good opportunity to hear what they say about it. I am getting requests from people that want to be able to record in 4K. They want to have 4K cameras, 4K capture cards. Um, you know, the PC that I've got on the workbench right now will have 4K capture cards in it as a way to kind of future-proof it, and maybe the kind of situation where they take a, a 4K cam and then slice and dice it to get multiple 1080 um, camera inputs out of it. So we'll see. But we're going we're, we're gonna to keep a good eye on that, and I suspect 4K will be um, a big player in uh, NAB 2018 in Las Vegas in April of next year. So we'll see about that. Jaybird, welcome Jaybird. Should I turn off auto white balancing on the PTZ20X because the color keeps changing? Yes. Yes. You should. 
Chris Watts says that stream guys offer CDN services. There you go. Mouse ears. Yes, that is true. I'm surprised, Mike, you didn't catch up on that one. Um, Guido says, once you see the ears, <laughs> you will always. Uh, Rich says, any update on your other live stream projects? Um, let's see. Uh, actually, yes. I'm, I'm working on a really neat project with a local church now. They've got, uh, it, it, it's, it's a nice little story. Have you got time for a story? Of course you do. Of course you do. Um, it's, it's not a big church. It's, a, I would say, on the, the small side of medium. And it's mostly older folks. And they have a, um, a pastor that will, kind of an unusual situation, a pastor who is not ordained but who is going to be ordained uh, later this month. And they want to live stream the ordination. And then also they figure once we've learned how to do that, we may as well put in live streaming. And so we're, we're working with them on, we're renting them equipment to do the live stream. And then they're going to kind of wrestle with, do they want to purchase a system um, for long-term use, regular use? But one of the fun things about this project is, number one, You've never seen a group, a, a room full of octogenarians so excited about technology. I mean, it's like all the high-tech 80-year-old guys <laughs> are hanging out at this church, and they're, they're excited about this project. And, and so it's gone from a simple live stream to, um, well, golly, you know, if we're going to live stream it, we've got to have Internet access. So they have uh, wired the building and and taken an extension from the internet that's way back on the other side of the property within 300 feet but still a ways away and drilled holes in concrete block walls and threaded uh, ethernet cables uh, all the way through from the main office to the sanctuary so they can have internet and while they were doing that they ran a second ethernet cable there you go and they're going to use that with a, uh, uh, what is it, one of those HDMI converters that converts to Ethernet and then back to HDMI at the other end. They're running that to the, uh, to the fellowship hall where they have a, a 60 inch TV on the wall that they use for PowerPoint presentations and they play videos off a laptop that they have in a, in a nearby storage room. But we're, we're hooking that up to the, to the uh, PC that's doing the streaming, so we're getting a live feed back to this overflow room that will, of course, include audio. And, you know, all these these amazing old guys, um, you know, old guys rule. I mean, this is, this is pretty cool. Uh, have put this, put this together with a little direction for me, and, you know, I'll say you need to get a cable from here to there, and then they go figure out how to do it. Um, we had, a, we had a wonderful time figuring out how to get audio out of their antique soundboard so that we could bring it into the live stream. And then, you know, we talked about if it's not mic'd, it's not going to be heard on the live stream. And they embraced that, and they're trying to figure out how to position the mic so they can get the perfect live stream. And it just it's so much fun to see people they get excited and passionate about this kind of project. And, you know, they're, uh, I, think, I think they're really looking forward to the long-term effect of live streaming. Um, since, you know, <laughs> these guys are older, they know what comes next is at some point, you know, they're not going to be able to get to church. And if they've created this vehicle where they can still maintain, you know, some sort of a relationship with their church, even though maybe they're not physically able to get to church anymore, um, you know, hats off to them. Hats off to them. I'm, I'm really excited about that. So, uh, that's the, that's the project that I'm working with right now. And then I'm also working with one at my church um, locally where uh, I'll actually be going to meet with the pastor tomorrow and doing a videotaping, kind of a, a, a welcome that we can play at the very beginning of our Sunday live stream so that folks that are there for the live stream kind of have some orientation of who we are, what we're doing, where we're located, you know, but in a, an official welcoming from the pastor. So if, if that goes if that goes well, I'll share it, share it with you. Um, so that's probably more than you wanted to know, but thanks for asking, uh, Rich. I think it was Rich that asked that one. Let's see. Um, yeah, and you guys have gone on to 
talk about other things. <laughs> That's all right. Um, welcome, Michael Rempel. Glad to have you here. Appreciate your comments in the Streaming Idiots uh, group online. Uh, Michael Graves, old guys rule. There you go. And Rick's here. Welcome, Rick. Rick, I'd love to have you come on the show sometime as a guest. I'll shoot you a note about that. All right, let's see. Ta da bum bum. Yeah, Giles is not going to be watching much 4K, I'll tell you that. Giles says, What's the bit rate? For 4K 60. <laughs> Michael Graves says 30. Yeah, I think that's what the vMix guys are planning on trying to do next Tuesday. And they're sweating bullets on how to get 30 up. I think they've got 20. And I think they're trying to figure out how to bond some lines or put in an extra line or something like that. Uh, Jerome says, what is the setup at my church? Right now, Jerome, as you can imagine, they're using equipment for me. I keep seeing these little dog ears right here. Um, we're using an Asus uh, Republic of Gamers uh, laptop, one of the older ones, one of the big, big monsters. 17 inch um, vmix 20 of course it's i think it's got a uh, nvidia 685 card in it it um, and a solid state uh, drive is main drive and then a terabyte um, hard hard drive as a data drive it's connecting to a ptc optics 12x camera over IP, a very simple IP. I mean, basically just a, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, a crossover cable. Um, but we're doing PoE as well, so we're adding power to it as, as we go in. And then we've got the little split out um, at, the, at the PTZ cam to split out the Ethernet from the power. That's mounted on a little bracket up close to the ceiling in the church. The, the room that we stream with is actually has no view of the church, so it's just basically what's on the stream. And then we're hooking into the, the sound system. It's a Behringer X32 system there at the church, and we're just taking a, a, just, just a, a, an output off the back of that, not a special mix for us. Um, I, wanna, I wanna learn how to do the, uh, the USB output from the Behringer because I understand that's a, an, an ASIO output so that we can pick up all the different channels and then we can adjust channels as we need to because you know there's always something that's too soft or, or, or too loud that we'd like to be able to play with. Um, it's a pretty simple setup. Pretty simple setup. One, one simple camera you know as the PTZ optics camera moves that's what people see but you know our, our philosophy is <laughs> <laughs> no, number one, nobody's paying for it. Um, number two, it's better than nothing. Um, and number three, that the message is really the important important thing. Unlike a show like this, where the medium is part of the message in the church, the medium is not the message. The message is the message. And so that's you know I always take a little solace in that. Um, and we're streaming on a, a DSL connection, which I think has about. Uh, 900k uplink and so we're using uh, 400k for video and 64k for audio excuse me and then we're recording 1080p and uploading that to YouTube later but we're streaming it to Facebook and there was this cool little Facebook um, app that we got that we put on our um, our website the church's website where we can embed the Facebook live feed when it was live it would show live when it was not live it would show um, three of, of the most recent videos that we had streamed to to Facebook so it's pretty neat little pretty neat little uh, plug-in there 
Okay, Mike Lattice says 4K P30 is anything from 13 to 34 megs. Hmm. 4K P60 is anything 20 to 51. Okay. Well, I've got 25 here. That would be tight. We might play with it one day. We could certainly do, you know, 4K 30. I'd have to get a different capture card. Anyway, we'll look at it. We'll look at it. And Sven is here from Norway. Welcome. Glad to have you. We are in post-show today, seeing as how the show has already happened. <laughs> uh, Jerome says he's watched the service. It looks good. Well, thank you. And that's... That is, uh, that's the PTZ Optics 12X camera set on low latency, zero millisecond buffer in vMix. That's how I know about the jumping, because we get, you know, a dropped frame, well, probably, you know, five or 6,000 dropped frames during the course of an hour. Guido has to go. Interesting show. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Um, Michael Graves says, the real question is what kind of visual merits, what kind of visual merits using 4K? <laughs> Certainly not old guys as talking heads. <laughs> well, I think the vMix guys don't think of themselves as old, Michael. <laughs> I know that's not what you meant. Um, I, I agreed. Agreed. You know, what, what is, what is it about 4K that's going to be so compelling? I think that it's going to depend a lot on the audience and not necessarily on the production. Because if the audience is watching on a 80 inch TV screen, their need for 4K is going to be higher than audience that are watching on their phone. So it, it may be somewhat audience driven more than production driven in, in that regard. Um, Just that, that's my initial thought. Um, Kenny says, different camera, but can the Mevo camera be put into vMix as an input? I don't think so. I think it's proprietary. Uh, I, I assume it would have to stream as input. Well, that, that may be possible if you can pick up a stream, but I don't think it will come in as a, a traditional camera and input. Uh, Jaybird says, has anyone tested how much CPU usage one NDI source uses compared to using an RTSP stream input in vMix? Yes. Yes. An RTSP, RTSP stream in vMix. Um, I used a PTZ Optics camera, and the stream is about 4 megabits per second. And then I did the same camera through the uh, bird dog, which is what we would call full NDI or not NDI like. And I got about 120 megabits per second. So a factor of 10, I would say. Um, ba -dum -bum -bum. Michael says he is an old school guy. <laughs> um, Ken wants to know why are you using low latency with your church are you doing iMac actually Ken <laughs> where is it right there right down there right below Sinclair it's because I'm an idiot I just set it up that way thinking that I wanted the lowest latency and when I found out why I was dropping frames I just never went back and changed it I need to I need to. Um, I'm going to have to turn off the, where's the settings? There it is. I need to turn off the scroll to last message so that I can keep up with what you guys are saying. Back there. 4K for sports and broadcast world. I, I You know, and, and I was thinking about that the other day too, Mike. And I'm wondering if I had to choose between 4K 30 and 1080 60 
for sports, I think I would go with the 1080 60, uh, at least today. I think the 60 frames a second might be more valuable to the viewer than the higher resolution. But that's just me. 4K great for doc documentaries. I would agree with that. Certainly anything that has, you know, color and richness, travel shows, uh, arts, um, anything like that. Um, Timothy said, same question was asked about 720 years ago. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Uh, Mike says you can get away with a good standard definition camera for talking heads. I, I agree you can. I agree you can. Will a 4K cooking show make you hungrier than a 1080p equivalent? Mm. smell a vision that's what we need. 4K will create work for makeup artists. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. In cinema, 4K, yeah, there you definitely cinema. But, but we're talking live streaming here. There were there were HD certified makeup artists pitching TV stations years ago. Wow. And Chris says a 4K documentary on the Sahara or the rainforest will look more impressive. I agree. Plus, you'll have the ability to look at it on a larger TV and get good high quality. Could HDR actually have a wider impact than 4K? Yeah. Might have a wider um, implementation. All right, Kenny says there's 4K, and then there's Ultra 4K. Not the, not the same thing. So what is the difference? You've tempted us with that. What is the difference? Ultra HD. Interesting. Interesting. Let's see who else has joined us while I wasn't looking. Sean's here. Hey, Sean. And JM Craft, welcome. Uh, Kiwi Chris, I recognized a little while ago. Clint's here. Glad to have you. Boris, welcome, Boris. Um, ba -dum -bum -bum -bum. Just looking through the list here to see guest 397. Glad to have you. Uh, Rick is here. Hey, Rick. Rick Clear is here. Welcome, sir. Ted in California. Thank you very much. I met Rick at StreamCon in Atlanta last spring. And uh, at that point, uh, Rick, I, I guess, I hope it's, I assume it's still the same. I don't know. But Rick was working with a, um, a Corvette, Chevy Corvette dealership. Um, with all sorts of uh, new and older Corvettes. Sounds like the job of a lifetime, dude. All right, Steven says, I joined late. Why can't I rewind? Ah, uh, we're using the new YouTube ultra low latency stream, which means there's about a three, two to three second latency between the time I say it and the time you hear it. But that also means that the uh, DVR function is not working. I think we're going to go back to the old way. We had some, some buffering issues and some lip sync issues earlier that I think were the result of using this ultra, uh, ultra low latency. So apologize. You'll have to go back and watch it later. Uh, oh, uh, Mr. Kraft, that's John, says, thanks for the PTZ power cord shipment. Tore mine up, cranking up the tripod with the cable strapped to the tripod leg. Ow! Man, I hope it wasn't plugged in when that happened. Wow. I mean, that's one of those oh crap moments, you know? It's like, ah. Oh. I mean, yeah. 
Um, Giles says, does YouTube still record the show when you use ultra low latency? I think so. <laughs> I think so. They should be. You see last week's show? Of course, Giles will go back and look for last week's show, and there's no there, no show there because I was sick and didn't do a show. And then he'll say, no, you don't have one last week. It must not have recorded. Oh, no. Let me just pull in Giles' leg. John said, yes, it was. Yeah. Sven, have I pronounced that correctly? S-V-E-I-N? Is that Sven? Which crystal, crystal clear camera am I using? I am using, aha, I am using, let's see, where do we have a picture of it here? Um, yeah, oh, here it is. I'm using the Marshall CV-502, which is a, uh, B&H calls it a POV camera. Marshall calls it a miniature camera. And it, it has a fixed lens, so it's just me. And it's pretty cool. We just added the Marshall Electronics line to our store. And specifically, the, this camera, the CV502, and its cousin, the CV505, which is this guy. The CV505 has HDMI and SDI outputs. So it's pretty cool. We're looking forward to uh, exploring those cameras more deeply and helping folks see if they're the right camera for them. We are getting ready to start a Saturday morning live stream from the Corvette dealership. All right. That's going to be great. Um, not understanding Giles. Oh, yeah, I do. Sorry about that. All right, Boris has got to go. Bye, Boris. All right, Dave. Thank you, Dave. I am back. I owe you an email. There are higher rates available. You can multiply your frame rate of choice to get storage. There you go. <laughs> Chris says, don't believe him. He's using an, an Ikegami $50 U.S. camera in his broadcasting center. <laughs> uh, is there such a thing? I might try one. By NAB 2018, 4K will be baseline and 8K will be less of a science project. I think so, too. And, and what I'm looking for with that, Michael, is, is a lot of 4K product, uh, especially geared to live streaming. Um, you know, I, I want to see vMix. You know, last year they had one station at NAB that was 4K. And great, but let's do more. Let's, let's do a 4K live stream from NAB. All right, Tommy's going to see me. He's going to call me after the stream. That's great. I love it. Andra says they're projectors that can handle 4K DCI. At 60 frames a second, 120 frames per second in, in stereo with two 60 frames per second inputs per eye. Wow. Giles has seen that some internet shows are now recording in, in 8K. It's something, you know, since the beginning of time, people have always said, mine is bigger than yours, right? Jerome says, Tom, is the Canon Vixia HFR 800 HD still good for live streaming? I think so, depending on what you're streaming. Um, I, I, I would feel comfortable using that for a talk show. I would feel very comfortable using that in a sporting environment uh, for a live stream. I'd feel comfortable using that in a church. Yep. And it's a good value. I mean, we're talking, you know, $250, $300. Sure. It's not going to be great, but it's going to be good. I think that's the, the, the way I would class it. Okay, let's see. Dan says 4K NDI X keys will launch at NAB 2018. 
Well, but of course. <laughs> That's assuming USB 4K is out by then. <laughs> Jerome wants to use the camera in the church service. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would, I would use that for sure. The reason why I didn't choose that, even though I have the older versions, the 100s and 200s um, of that camera for my church, is because I didn't want to put a cameraman in there. I wanted to have, um, I wanted to use a PTZ cam, and so it would be as 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 unobtrusive as possible. Yep. Hey Kevin, uh, the approximate range for the Marshall cameras, the the two that we were showing today, um, this one the 505, which is HDMI and SDI, and then. The one that I'm actually using right now, which is the SDI version, the 502, the, um, uh, hold on a second, I lost my place. Oh, there we go. Um, the retail, I think, is $500 on either one. But we're going to see if maybe we can't get together a, a group buy um, and, um, and get, get if enough people want them and see if we can't get some 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 sort of deal there all right for those of you that are are still not watching us on uh, Eastern Shore Broadcasting you've got the chat right here but you can also get a longer bigger version of the chat by going to Eastern Shore Broadcasting you can pop it out and do all that kind of stuff uh, let's see Kenny says, what are the two gray color terminals for the Nest, the power on the 502? Um, and what, what he's talking about is those right there. So let's go find out what those are. I think they're some sort of control, Kenny. Let me see. We're going to look it up in the uh, handy dandy sheet. It is RS-485 control. And RS-485. Does that mean that you can control the, all the settings in the camera over RS-485? That's a good question. Kevin said he might be interested. I think Kevin's streaming at his church, and and there might be situations in a church where yes, a fixed camera, no camera guy, but really high quality, would be that. Um, so let's see. And Kenny asked about the gray terminals, and they are RJ. No, they're not RJ. RS four eighty five. Daniel says he's currently using three PTZs in the back of the church. He wants to put two static cameras for the pulpit and the lectern. One PTZ in the back, one PTZ in the front. So full church coverage and great for weddings. Ah, yes, there we go. It would be. All right, Mike Lattis says RS-485 is the Sony Visca control. Uh, it's a serial connection scheme better than RS-232 for long cable runs. Huh, basically a balanced version of RS-232. Okay, well, RS-485 is nicer than RS-422. You can daisy chain it from one camera to another. You only need one port on the PC to hook it up. That's all well and good, guys, but the Sony Visca control, how did, what, what's the, what's the takeaway from that? What's the bottom line? What, what can we do with Sony Visca? I mean, can we go to, can we do, can we do all this? All the on-screen display stuff using that. 
mean, I understand it supports multiple devices and you can daisy chain and all that's well and good, but what's it going to do for me? Because I'm not seeing it in the little manual here, other than the fact that it exists. That is my gripe with people that write manuals. They need to take the, the stupidest person in the company to write the manual. And that way, all the, all the stupid questions get answered. Because if you get the, the, the smart guys to write it, they leave out the stuff that they already know. RS-485 is one way. VSCA is a signaling protocol for Sony devices. That's great. How does it apply here? All right, Dave said he can change his settings on the Sony 70 via RS-232. Aha. Uh -huh. Michael says, ask Marshall if they have a controller. A protocol by itself is only useful to a programmer. Ah, uh, good point. Kiwi, Chris has got to go. Chris, loved having you. Thanks, man. Michael says, largely PTC control, I thought. Well, that's the only way I've known about it. And here we're talking about a camera that is not a PTZ camera. Um, and really doesn't speak to it. All right, we're here on, under features. It says, ba -dum -bum -bum -bum, one third inch progressive scan sensor. Uh, 0 0.2 lux day color, 0 0.1 lux night and black and white, 0 0.005 lux with the DSS on. Cool. Um, full control, full, oh, excuse me, full OSD on screen display, full OSD control and RS-485. So I gotta figure this out. This is good stuff. Because boy, if, if that means I don't have to use that little joystick and I can control it through software. Sean says, I assume it's an in intern for manuals that doesn't know what to put or ask when creating them. Well, in fact, I think Sean, an intern would be the perfect one because they would say, well, I don't know what this means. Therefore, other people aren't going to know either. And Kane was saying about balance and two wires, but one way, okay. Dave says, like, white balance, power off on. Really? And Mike says, Mike's been Googling this stuff. Um, Marshall also has camera control application. Aha. Uh -huh. And... Michael has given us a link to the 502. Chris has got to go. Michael says it works through the RS-485. I'm going to set up software. Kenny says, I thought 232 and 485 took three wires to work. Uh, Transmit, receive, and ground. Where is the third terminal on the cam? Hmm. Okay, Michael Gray says, use a USB to RS-485 RS converter sold separately. Aha! Michael says, oh, Nick's here. Hey, Nick. I've been following your family. I've also been praying for you guys. Good-looking kids. RS-485 is a special port, but there are converters from it to RS-232. And if you only have USB, there are converters for that too. There we go. Awesome. Awesome. Michael said, that's what Marshall says about the software. And Nick says, thank you. I guess you guys can see it right here, but I'm reading it out loud so that at least uh, we don't have all this dead air while I read it and ponder it. Okay, so I need to find out about this RS-485 and it would allow me to 
control this camera without having to touch it. That would be important. All right, Mike. <laughs> Mike's got it. 502 can be used in broadcast, television, sports, college sports, OB vans and trucks, concerts, music videos, reality TV. I guess that's what this is. Performing arts, culinary shows, car TV shows, hidden camera shows, international racing circuits. Oh, racing. You could put a bunch of these around a racetrack. Off-road racing, horse racing, house of worship, and POV video shots. Oh, Giles says, also good for those listening only. I got gotcha. you. Kenny says, yes, and then tell us. Okay, there we go. Andra says, there is a camera control software to use with the camera on their website. Let's see, you guys are paying attention. Some martial marketing for you guys. And Andres lists the, uh, the website. Awesome. Awesome. You guys are great. You guys are great. I'm loving it. I am loving it. Okay. It's pushing 3.30 here in Alabama time. And our post show has gone about 55 minutes. Don't forget that next week we've got Chris uh, Graner. I don't know if it's Graner or Grainer. I think it's Graner uh, with Rivet. Rivet. I asked him about Rivet. And he said, well, we're thinking, you know, Rivet is kind of like something that holds things together. A rivet. Um, I think it sounds like a frog. You know, rivet, rivet, rivet. I'll ask him about that in pre-show. Um, thank you, Kenny. Loved having you. Giles thought it was a frog. There you go. All right. And Mike says, this is what the control software looks like. Ooh, let's see what that looks like. Ooh, that looks complicated. In case you guys don't want to look at that, I will just pull up a web browser real quick. And uh, we'll, since it's a lot of text, we're going to sharpen it. And we're going to make it larger so that it's uh, seeable. We'll go to Position tab. And we'll increase the size. And we'll increase the size just a tad more. There we go. And then we'll cut to it. And that's what the control software does. So that looks like, oh, that's multiple cameras. I got you. So that's up to seven cameras right there. And then each camera has its own advanced menu. Cool, cool. And then it has each, it has a, um, OSD control for each one. Okay. So I guess you pop the screen up there and then you use this to control it remotely. All right. I like that. I can go with that. Thanks, Giles. Thanks, Andres. Dave says, try this. Okay. What is that? Giles says, looks like it controls everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. Got it. Got it. Cool. Okay. Okay, well, you guys are great, as usual. And very uh, understanding. We're going to have fun. We're going to have fun. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Sean and Martin, Mike, Timothy, Martin. Clint, Anderson, Giles, Michael, Daniel, Henry, Kenny, Jerome, Kane, Dave, Martin, Jerry, Ryan, Ted, 
for hanging around till the bitter end. And those of you watching us <laughs> without being in chat, we're glad to have you too. So y'all take care, and we will see you next week. We'll let the stream run out for 2.25 seconds, and uh, we'll check you later.